long to poly bar. And today I'm going to sharpen my 80 tooth cross cut saw blade for my DeWalt Razor Elm saw. I've cleaned it and I've done a video on that, which you can click up there. So what I'm going to use to sharpen this thing is one of these. I'm sure you've seen these about before. Yeah, I know Harbour Freight uh, make them. This particular one's from Berlin. I say Harbour Freight make them, they probably just import them. But it's okay, but it's not brilliant. But anyway, let's, let's see if we can sharpen this thing, shall we? Because I'm only going to touch this blade up, I'm not actually going to give it a full grind. I'm only going to um, grind the flats of each tooth. Now the reason for that is I don't want to cause a huge difference to the circumference or the height of each of these teeth by inaccurately sharpening individual teeth. Because these machines are okay, but they're not great. I use it for the purpose of actually just touching the saw blades up really, and not necessarily um, a full blown sharpen this particular saw blade because it's got 80 teeth and it's a good quality blade. I don't want a spoiler, frankly. As you see the size of these teeth on here, they've got lots of life in them. So first thing we've got to do is we've got to mount the blade into this carrier arrangement here. I don't know if you know, as I've removed some parts from this machine, because I've been using the machine for about four years, and some bits of it I found a total waste of time. All I really want is something to hold my blade, sharpening disc that goes back and forwards that is capable of sharpening tungsten carbide. <laughs> oh, hello! Welcome to my woodworking channel, Wally Bois, the place where you'll learn woodworking tips and tricks. And if you'd be most kind, hammer that subscribe button. Anyway, it's time to get back to the video. So I've got to plonk that on there like so. I'm then going to put the cone washer on, and then we have a spring, and then we have another washer on top of that, and then the, the nut, the locking nut or the clamping nut on top of that. So we bog it on there like that. This blade is actually quite good for me because when you're sharpening some teeth, you have to allow for the fact that one tooth is going one way and the other tooth is set the other way on each alternate. So you have to like mark them as you go along. This particular blade, these faces perpendicular to the actual blade itself. So I've only got to set up for one tooth and just keep an eye on it and make sure that I'm actually sharpening the same all the way around. I haven't bolted this down or anything because I want to move it back so I can show you what I'm doing. Normally you'd bolt this down onto something or screw it down onto a board and clamp it into your voice. At the moment, that is how much travel I've allowed on this machine and there's a little stop in there um, at the back here which you can adjust. But I've got it set to basically where I need it to be for every single blade that I own. So the first thing you've got to do, once you've actually got the um, blade mounted in your carrier here, holder, carrier, whatever you like to call it, this knob here, you loosen this, so the flat of the tooth lays on the side of the disc. Remember, this is how I'm using the machine. I'm not going to say it's the correct way to use the machine. Is, is, it, is it necessarily how, what it's been designed for? Probably not. But this is how I use it, and it works for me. Because these machines, are, they're not perfect, but they're so, so cheap. So you can see here, the travel of the actual sharpening disc here, this diamond impregnated disc, doesn't go past the actual tooth. So you're not going to end up cutting into the gullet of the saw blade. You don't want that. You do, all you want to do is sharpen the actual flat of the tooth itself. Now, you could set this up so you can sharpen it on the top of the tooth. Sometimes I do that as well. Um, but equally, you, need, not, you don't just need the tips of the saw tooth to be sharp you need the sides to be sharp and just doing the top of the saw tooth is not going to sharpen the sides it's the sides of the tooth that cause the burning you get when you're cross cutting like we bring the blade back but the thing you must remember you need to know where you are you need to know what tooth you have actually sharpened as you go along so I, I tend to look at the saw blade if you're a saw blade that's split into four like this one is with the expansions there's little copper thingies in there um, so what I do is I'll start there for instance and beans i don't have to do this saw blade alternatively alternatively alternately i can start there like so and work my way on to the next segment it just gives me an indication how far i've traveled around the saw blade remember there's 80 teeth so it's not gonna be quick is it we bring it back away from the saw blade itself first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna, I'm gonna do a couple of passes on there and have a look, see how it's grinding the face of the tooth. If it's, I find it's, it's taking more off the top or the bottom, then I'll readjust this so it doesn't, so it's then flat. You just get yourself a torch or something, you can shine on the tooth, and you can see then whether or not there's any reflection, if it's shining from top to bottom of that tooth. You can adjust it using the 10 mil spanner, it doesn't come with it, the one that comes with it is ridiculously stupid. Pass that on there again. Oh, 
Uh, I'm a lot happy with it now. So now I can get on with the sharpening. Make sure you pull up my back before you move the actual blade around. Take the pressure off, pull it back. Try not to damage your gullet. I don't you see this, I'm actually using my hand on the left here to actually pull the tooth onto the actual diamond impregnated disc. When you've got a lot of teeth to do, it's quite easy to get a bit carried away. If you're doing well here, then you end up causing a problem. It's damaging your tooth. So I'm going to make another quick inspection to make sure I'm okay. Use my torch. Underneath like so, I'm still happy with that, that's good. I think I've got that set right now. So. When you're pulling the tooth to the blade, what you're doing, you're flattening the tooth. There's a bit of giving here, a bit of movement. It allows for any discrepancies. Make sure you release the pressure of the tooth on the blade before you actually bring the handle back. So I've now gone round the whole 80 teeth and I've just sharpened the flat of the tooth. So the part of the tooth I've flat sharpened is just the flat part. I haven't sharpened the top. It will automatically sharpen all the way around the external edge of that flat, which in turn sharpens the saw blade. And it definitely feels sharper now. Personally, I think a lot of the problem with this saw blade was the, the tooth chip there. So the saw blade has, what I can see, one chipped tooth. That is not too bad to be fair. It's not enough for me to say, let's change it. If you can see there, you can see the faces of each of those teeth are nice and shiny now. That's a sign that you've actually sharpened them. Anyway, thank you for watching my little video on sharpening the saw blade with a saw blade sharpener such as this typical sort of Harbour Freighty, Chinesey, importy type thing. Um, it works, but it's not brilliant, but it, um, if you just want to touch a blade up and what have you, it's perfectly fine for that. But there are better solutions in my mind. Um, well, this sent it to the saw doctor. <laughs> yeah, it's eight teeth on a 10 inch blade. So let's remove it from there and I'll put it back into the uh, saw. Ooh, I feel better. Yeah. Thank you for watching. managed to get to the end of my video. Well, either I must have grabbed your attention or you just couldn't be bothered to click off. If you'd be most kind and subscribe and maybe click the little bell icon because then you'll get a notification every time I upload a new woodworking video. And I know you'd be excited about that. So, hammer that like button, hammer that subscribe button and comment below. <laughs>